Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're going to react to why Islam is rationally the truth by the people of Islam. So thank you very much for the video recommendation, guys. As I said multiple times here on this channel, I'm interested in rational videos. I really cannot stand those emotionally manipulative videos. It doesn't do anything for me. I want to be presented with facts that I then can verify. Therefore, I'm really excited to watch today's video. Let's have a look. It's important to know why it is rationally the truth. Why else would we have rationale? By going through five important steps, we should arrive at the rational conclusion that Islam is the true purpose of our existence and is the most in line with human nature. That is a very big claim. Let's go. I love this new shit. I say it every time. I know. Step 1. Establishing God's existence. Consider this beautiful painting of nature. If I told you that some ink randomly fell onto the paper and made it by chance, how crazy would you think I was? You would instantly deny this and tell me that a painter designed it. If something like a painting must have a designer, how about something far more complex like the universe? I have to say right away that the existence of God doesn't have to be proven for me personally. Coming from a Christian Orthodox background, I of course believe in God and for me it is the only logical explanation why we would have a universe in the first place. So the argument about the existence itself is directed to non-believers. Just like the painting Which is different good. colors and techniques to draw the painting, the universe is also finely tuned to perfection by many fundamentals. Of course. If the painter made a small mistake, it would ruin the painting. Similarly, if the fine tuning of the universe were to change even by the smallest amount, it would no longer exist. True. Just like it is almost impossible to accidentally produce this painting, the odds are almost infinitely more impossible for the universe to accidentally come into existence. That is true, but nevertheless, the atheists love to believe that they are this little coincidence. I don't know why. They love it. Makes Allah challenges special. our intellect in a profound verse in the Quran. He says, Were they created by nothing? Or were they the creators of themselves? Or were they the creators of the heavens and the earth? Rather, they are not certain. Firstly, right. Allah asks, were they created by nothing? If you think about it, you will quickly realize that this is impossible as you cannot create something from nothing. Now apply this logic to the universe as a whole. Then Allah asks, were they the creators? As I said already, those talking points are directed towards non-believers, towards atheists. Obviously, something cannot come out of nothing. I fully agree here. Christianity, Judaism, Islam all speak about God. But even if we look into Hinduism, the Baha'i faith and what not, plenty of religions speak about God. Obviously. For me, it will be interesting to see how the existence of God will be linked to the truth of Islam. This is of themselves. For you to create yourself, you have to already exist before you were born to create yourself, which is sure. also impossible. Now apply the same logic to the universe. Since the universe has a beginning, it could not have created itself. Finally, Allah concludes by saying, or were they the creators of the heavens and the earth? Two points. Firstly, the universe existed billions of years before us, and to create something that existed before we were even born is impossible. Secondly, the universe is far, far greater than us. 
Look at the most impressive human inventions and you'll find that they're nothing compared to even a fly. Human creation is always prone to mistakes and needs teams of maintenance and support in case of breakages or errors. If something as trivial as software needs maintenance, who then is maintaining the universe? The necessary being. From this verse alone, Allah shows us that we could not have come from nothing, we could not have created ourselves, and we cannot create anything as incredible as the universe. So how then do we think we are intelligent enough to deny the existence of- Of course, some atheists will believe that the universe is a virtual simulation and therefore because we are building virtual simulations, we will create another universe. But even with that argument, they fail to understand that then there would be a creator that created the virtual universe. Creator. It's ridiculous. Okay, it doesn't make any sense. You might now be thinking, if God created the universe, who created God? Firstly, to say that God has a beginning or is created by definition means this being can no longer be a God. But for argument's sake, let's say that the universe was created by something that is created. The next logical question is, what created that thing? That's right. And you can ask that question again. And you would have an infinite chain of cause and effect. Again, an infinite amount of times. And the only way to break this chain yes. is to say that creation was created by an uncreated creator. That's correct. Secondly, time is a property of the universe. Since the universe has a beginning, we use time to describe what happened from that point. Since Allah is the creator of the universe and time, it does not mean he is restricted by these laws. Absolutely correct. Hopefully, we should arrive at the rational conclusion that the universe is created and maintained by an uncreated creator. We fully agree, my friend. 100%. I agree with Generally, all this. Obviously, there's, there's one only person one in charge. There's one captain of a ship and one king of a country. Imagine you're driving a car and both you and the person next to you have a steering wheel. <laughs> Either you agree which way to turn, which shows you are both dependent on each other, or you try and turn left and the other tries turning right and one of you overpowers the other. Right. Now apply this logic to God. If there was more than one God, then these gods cannot be all powerful for the same reasons. And a god that is not all powerful, by definition, cannot be a god. Just imagine if there were two kings running a country. There would be chaos, and amazingly, Allah directly addresses this in the Quran. He says, Had there been other gods besides Allah, they both would have been destroyed. In Islam, one of Allah's names is Al Qahar, the one that overpowers. He doesn't answer to anything or anyone, and his will is imposing. The biggest proof that there is only one God is the fact that there is balance in the universe. The laws of physics are consistent, the sky is always blue, and gravity is always the same. I personally really don't need any conviction that there is only one God. However, when he uses the physical laws and their stability for proof of one God, I have to ask why. I don't think an atheist would be really convinced by that argument. That's all I'm saying. Revelation. At this point, you might believe in God, but have a problem following organized religion. I mean, why should you be restricted to a specific way of life, right? Yes, that is a valid observation for somebody like myself that comes from Christian Orthodoxy, organized religion, the strictest form of Orthodoxy. Now looking at Islam, I am of course cautious. But if you really think about it, you already are living your life in a specific way according to the laws of your country. Imagine if- Yeah, but I don't agree with the laws of my country. If your country had no law, life would be terrifying and everyone would be so lost. This shows us that we need direction. Unfortunately, that is true. Humans really are in a state where they need direction they need to follow. At least 99% of people, yes. Not only that, but every country has slightly different laws that are constantly changing over time, which also shows us that we as humans cannot decide what is 100% right or wrong. I would say that if our innate nature is intact and we are connected to God, we can tell right from wrong. However, to base right and wrong on the laws of certain countries would be of course flawed. So if Especially we if you look at liberalism right now. But cannot decide what is objectively right or wrong, we have a problem. Where do we get the right direction from?
Yes, correct. In Christianity, we say that it is written in our hearts. In Islam, we have the concept of the fitrah. This is why I say that if we are connected to God, we can know what is right and wrong. Imagine if I gave you a car and you'd never seen one before. Okay. Guessing what to put in the fuel tank and what buttons to press is not good enough. But referring to the instruction manual provided by the manufacturer, we will know exactly how to drive the car. In the exact same way, if I want to know why am I here, where am I going, what is my purpose, I must refer to the revelation provided by the creator. To compare your biological body to a car is flawed, of course. You cannot feel that car. If you have absolutely no idea how to drive it, what fuel to put in, you will absolutely wreck that car sooner or later. However, your body is something that you can feel. I make the argument that if we would live in a more natural environment, we would know what is right and wrong for our bodies and for our conduct. In this modern day, however, we are bombarded with junk food, with drugs, with absolute sexual immorality, pop culture, etc, etc. And this is why we get detached from our bodies. On top of that, some people use antidepressants where they sever that connection completely. And this is why they cannot listen to their own intuition any longer. Don't get me wrong, I'm not speaking out against revelation at all. But here on this channel, I've been talking so long about health and this is why I want to stress this point. It is so crucial for the human being to eat its species-specific diet and to be in a natural environment far, far away from this liberal society. So why Islam? Yes. Islam is the only religion that is self-evident to be the truth. That's a bold claim. How? Yes. The answer is the Qur'an. We've all heard about Moses splitting the sea and Jesus being born a miraculous birth, yes. but these miracles are all limited to the time and place in which they happen. Sure. The Qur'an, on the other hand, is a special miracle that was given to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and is not limited to time or place. It is a miracle that me and you can pick up, study and experience anywhere, anytime. You can never prove that the splitting of the sea actually took place, but True. the Qur'an can be proved to be from God. It is a book like no other book, a speech like no other speech, and this can be shown in so many ways. For example, Allah predicted its preservation from the beginning. More than 1,400 years have passed, and the Qur'an remains in its original language completely unchanged. Since Muslims claim the Qur'an is the direct word of God, any changes, even if it was a single letter, would instantly falsify this claim. Yes. Allah challenges the reader to look for contradictions if they think the Qur'an is man-made. What we find is that the message is 100% consistent with absolutely no contradictions. Allah also told us that he would make the Qur'an easy to learn. Today, millions of people around the world have the Qur'an stored in memory. Every single generation since the Qur'an was revealed has had memorizers, making it the only book in history to have passed down in both human memory and written form. If all books were to just disappear, the only one that would be back in a day is the Qur'an. Amazingly, Allah told us that when people listen to the Qur'an being recited, they are impacted and you see them start to cry. Thanks to YouTube, we can see this happening with our own eyes. You see people who aren't even Muslim and don't even understand the language breaking down into tears. Even those who recite occasionally cry. What other speech can do this? <laughs> Linguistically speaking, the Qur'an remains the best Arabic literature to date. Since Arabic is arguably the most eloquent language to ever exist, this makes the Qur'an the most eloquent speech in the most eloquent language in history. The language of the Qur'an alone is enough to prove that it could not have come from man. This point I cannot verify because I do not speak Arabic. To add to this, the Qur'an is also jam-packed full of scientific and historical accuracies that were impossible to have been known 14 centuries ago. From the Big Bang, to the expansion of the universe, and to every living thing being made from water. 
from the two seas that meet but don't mix to the accurate description of the human embryo. In fact, there are more than 1,000 scientific verses in the book, and not a single one of them can be disproved by established science. For those who are spiritual, it magnifies our spirituality. For those who are intellectual, it challenges our rationality. And the Quran, by far, is the most popular book in the world that is read billions of times every single day, week in, week out, all year round. As always, guys, I'm giving you my unfiltered, honest response. An appeal to popularity is not a good argument. By far, it we see it right now. Liberalism is popular, LGBTism is popular, veganism is popular. It doesn't make it true. For these reasons, it's Muslims crucial. can proudly claim that the Quran is self evident to be entirely from God. If you are still skeptical, pick up a Quran and read it for yourself. I did. Imagine an African child that lived 12 years in poverty and then died of starvation. Now compare this boy to a 70 year old drug dealer that had all the money, all the cars and everything he wanted and then he also died of old age. One lived a short, miserable and difficult life, and the other lived in luxury whilst causing harm to society. Now, they are simply a collection of bones six feet under the ground. Yes. If there was no life after death, how unfair and depressing would that be? The world is full of injustice. People get away with so much evil and innocents get blamed for things they didn't do. Simply just believing in the day of judgment is belief in ultimate justice and accountability. It breathes hope and optimism into every struggling heart. In Islam, the events of the afterlife are described in such graphic detail. No other religion describes it with such conviction, and Allah calls the day of judgment in the Quran the ultimate reality. Muslims live to do good in preparation for death. Isn't this a powerful motivator? It surely can be a powerful motivator for people. For me personally, I simply like to do good because it's good. Throughout history, Allah has sent prophets like Abraham, Moses and Jesus to bring people back to the worship of one God. In Islam, the final prophet sent to humanity was the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. What's interesting is that the way Muslims have preserved his life is above and beyond any other type of preservation in history. You can't just make up stories about him. Narrations must be supported by the chain of narrators that goes all the way back to his time. The narration and narrators are then tested against strict criteria to verify that the narration can be trusted. Depending on the tests, the narration is then graded with a level of authenticity. Anything you read about the Prophet must have a grade or else it is completely ignored. If the grade is substantially weak, Muslims instantly reject the narration. So to deny that he existed is like denying all history. Saying that, his life is so well documented because of the impact he had on his people. We know things like how he used to eat and even the position he used to sleep. It wouldn't be far from accurate to say that we know more about him than any other historical figure. All of this information literally invites us to study his life and make a rational decision to see if he was actually a prophet or not. There are three possibilities for this claim. Either he was lying, or he was mad, or he was telling the truth. Let's break this down. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, received the first revelation from God at the age of 40. This means he lived a completely normal life for 40 years before becoming a prophet. In these 40 years, he built a reputation in his community and they literally nicknamed him the truthful and the trustworthy. He was known to have never told a single lie. Think about it. 
40 years of sincerity and then to suddenly come up with a monumental lie like being a prophet doesn't make any logical sense. Later in his life, as people started joining Islam, the leaders were getting more frustrated. They offered him anything he wanted just so that he stopped preaching. <laughs> if there was any time to show that he was lying, this was it. Remember, a liar always lies for a reason, but he rejected. Doesn't this show sincerity? The Prophet was also known to have so much wisdom and his character was impeccable. People used to race to serve him in any way they could. Muslims and non-Muslims turned to him for advice and he never said no to any request. These are not qualities of someone that is mad. Perhaps the biggest proof for me is that the Prophet could not read or write, had no educational background, yet was able to bring forth the Qur'an that remains the best literature the world has seen even after 1400 years. Logically, this is enough to verify his prophethood. The Qur'an sure. has literally shaken the world. The Prophet also told many prophecies that made no sense at the time and have only recently materialized. Listen to this. He said that the poor Arabs of the deserts would compete in building tall buildings. They really do. He said that interest will spread such that no one can escape the dust of it. Yep, unfortunately. He said that power and authority will be given to the wrong people. Trump was wrong. He said Biden's that sexual right. promiscuity would become rampant and that parents would give birth to their masters. Yep, that is for These sure These are true. only just a few examples from a plethora of authentically graded prophecies. Amazingly, his greatness is globally recognized even by non-Muslims. For example, Michael Hart, who wrote the famous book of the top 100 We talked about Michael Hart before. History, and he places the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as number one in his list. Other examples include Dr. Keith Moore, George Bernard Shaw, Gandhi, Thomas Carlyle, Lamartine, and the list goes on and on. Can't we logically and rationally say that he was telling the truth? See, the message of Islam is very simple. It is to direct all inward and outward acts of worship to Allah and Allah alone. Worship isn't just to pray. Worship is to obey and to love and to rely upon Allah more than anything or anyone else. It means to break free from society's expectations of you and to fully submit to the expectations of the Creator. In other words, you don't act a certain way or dress a certain way to please certain people. Everything you do is for the sake of Allah. This is true liberation if you ask me. There is no leap of faith in Islam. Allah has given us an intellect, countless signs and a lifetime to search for him. That's why Islam is hated in the West because it is uncontrollable. If you don't listen to your government and submit only to God, of course it will cause friction. If after this video like you it. now believe that there is only one God and that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was his final prophet, you have found the truth and I would like to personally invite you to Islam. Alright guys, and this is it for today's video. Long enough as it is, I hope you enjoyed it. I liked the video, however I didn't agree with all the claims and moreover I have to research them myself. Guys, this is just how I tick. I can't simply watch a video and take the people's word for it. I have to read it myself. As I already said, I'm reading two biographies of Mohammed at the moment to study his life and to learn more about him. Moreover, I'm reading hadiths and I'm comparing them to the Quran to find the truth. 
When I was in my 20s, I saw a bunch of vegan videos on YouTube and for me they made sense. I did minimal research and shortly after I was a vegan, which led to me staying vegan for four years straight after I destroyed my health completely with that malnourishment. And this is why now being older, being a little bit wiser, I analyze everything in detail, overanalyze it to really see if it makes sense rationally, if it is logically consistent. As I said previously, the Quran is miraculous. It is absolutely beautiful to read. It is transformative. Moreover, Tawheed makes all the rational, logical sense in the world. But right now, I'm still taking my time and I have to continue to learn. Guys, if you enjoy my journey, then please subscribe to this channel. And of course, let me know in the comment section that you enjoy those videos. Moreover, let me know which video I should react to next. All right. If you like the video, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.